Hey everybody, before the show gets started, I want to give you a heads up of where you should be this Saturday, March 19th from 12.30 to 5.30. I'm talking about the NC Artist Showcase at the Tongue and Groove Volume 2. Yeah, it's at 1018 South Saunders Street, and here's what's to expect. Food, booze, and bands, all for free, just Give a charitable donation. Yes, we strongly suggest a donation and bring your ID. But keep in mind, the folks that are going to be there, they're all of our friends, like Dram and Draft, Trophy Brewing Company, and Longleaf Swine. Mmm, delicious. There's live music, there's art. It's a great way to spend a Saturday afternoon. Yeah, Raleigh-based nonprofit Next Step Raleigh helps individuals recover from paralysis using state-of-the-art activity-based therapy. If you want more information, click the link in our show notes or check out our social media. We're promoting it now. So it's this Saturday, the day after tomorrow, if you're listening when the show comes out. Thank you for downloading, subscribing, and telling your friends about the North Carolina Food and Beverage Podcast. Coming to you from the Kitchen Studios in downtown Raleigh. This episode is sponsored in part by Spot On, tech that helps your business grow. Request a demo at spoton.com. And GigPro. Change the way you find staff with GigPro. And Joe Van Gogh Coffee, serving the community from seed to cup. And now... These two couldn't be any less Irish, but here they are, two lucky guys. It's Max Trujillo and Matthew Weiss. Hello, and thank you for listening to the North Carolina Food and Beverage Podcast. I am your co-host, Max Trujillo. And I am your co-host, Matthew Weiss. And we are inside the tent at the culinary village of the Charleston Wine and Food Festival with a very special guest, a man who makes knives, not just any knife. If you're in the business, you know these knives. These are Middleton made knives out of St. Stephen, South Carolina. And we're with the man himself, Quentin Middleton. Hello, 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 man. Y'all got some wonderful voices. <laughs> well, no, you were just singing Stevie Wonder <laughs> five seconds ago. <laughs> Put that in, I think I might've been recording. You had the, you had the whole movie thing. I am Quentin Middleton. <laughs> in a world where <laughs> knives are forged in heat and fire. Uh, but let's let's talk about this. So I first heard about Middleton Knives from our guest on the podcast right now, Scott Crawford. Uh, when he was opening up Standard Foods, he had this entire shelf devoted to Middleton made knives. I'm like, what's this? He's like, only the best knife that you can work with. And that was high praise. But what, what are we talking about? What, what are you specializing in? Talk, talk to us about your knives. So what I specialize in, I specialize strictly into culinary knives. I started off making hunting knives and swords. And then um, I'm a very spiritual person. The yeah. Holy Spirit told me in a dream, make chef knives. And that was back in 2008 or 2009. And I just ran with it. Really? Yeah. Do you cook yourself? Oh, yeah, man. So my mom has all boys. It's four boys. And she said... God bless uh, her. Yeah, God bless her. Lord Jesus. <laughs> I got two. I know how so it goes. So yeah. <laughs> So she said, I would not send you out not knowing how to bake, cook. You need to be able to sustain a household if, if need be. Yeah. So you work in kitchens. You're aware. You're kind of familiar with what like a chef would want. So technically, I haven't worked in a kitchen per se, like a professional kitchen. Yeah. But actually, what I've done, I've done my homework. I've basically put myself in a corner and watched chefs work. Yeah. So I've watched them on the line and, and while they're in the weeds. So I'm seeing how they work and how they move, and that's how I kind of develop my designs. Talk us through a little bit with the knife industry in general, because. Like, I got a good buddy that's making knives. He's my former bandmate making Josh Scott knives out of Ohio. And he was geeking out with me, talking to me about knives, and sent me a, a beautiful knife. But there's obviously, like, different grades and levels and, and different alloys you're using. So what yes. what, what, what kind of helps us understand quality, and what are you working with? So I use, I use high-carbon steel and um, stainless, but that's like saying car, truck. Yeah. Like, so it's so... Broad, broad. And so it's, it's not really hitting the mark. So it just like food, steel has ingredients. So the type of steel I use is so AEBL. It has makeup of carbon, chromium, vanadium. So different makes up to make up that grade of steel. So that there's so many ingredients that go in different types of steel. So it's you can geek out on that, but yeah. I'm not. <laughs> so first of all, actually even taking it back, how did you learn how to make knives? Okay, so I learned 
from the great Jason Knight. I was his apprentice for six years. And what a great name for a, a knife <laughs> a maker, maker, Jason Knight. <laughs> yeah. Man, he's a great friend of mine, and we are brothers to this day. And he took me in when I was 17, and I've been making knives since. And he taught me how to see. He makes buoy knives, swords. Like I was saying earlier, man, the Holy Spirit, I wanted to understand, like, how can I make this as a business? What can I do? I didn't want to uh, step on Jason's toes and follow my hand. I didn't want to copy him, per se. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to do my own, and... I'm praying and asking God, like, okay, what do I do? And that's when I have that dream saying, Chef Knives, plain as day. I said, okay, how do I do that? So I made a few a few uh, Chef Knives, and I started going to every last restaurant in Charleston, asking questions like, hey, um, would you buy my knives? Or, hey, can you help me develop a knife? And some of them were great enough, uh, like Sean Brock, Craig Deal, Man, the list just goes on and on for the people that were very instrumental with my growth as a knife maker. And from those meetings and those interactions and watching them work inside the um, the kitchen, now that made me understand how uh, what it made me understand what a, a professional chef needs. Uh, versus, I came from making swords and bowie knives where that's not really precise at all to something that's very acute angles, very thin and petite. So I have to worry about balance and sleep and making it look sexy. Yeah. <laughs> like, Plus, I got to say, it's probably, I imagine that the market is a little bit stronger making chef knives than, than swords. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. I mean, <laughs> it is. You know, Game of Thrones was pretty cool, but after the season ended or the show ended, you're like, yeah, I don't need this sword yeah, I don't any need longer. Anymore. Like, it was, it's almost like, how do I make this a business? So I need to make something sustainable. So yeah. uh, hunting and fishing and all that is seasonal. Yeah. And then you got... Don't get me wrong, I'm an anime geek, but um, <laughs> swords and reverse katanas is not sustainable. So yeah. I have two kids and a wife, so I need to right. <laughs> pay the bills. So back to the steel, what do you, what do, you do? Do you have a specific purveyor that yes. you work for that so, you know is um, always making the best or providing you with the best? There's um, There are a few vendors that I get my steel from. There's some in New Jersey and uh, Idaho and... There's, there are a lot of uh, steel bears that I get it from, but also there are the market of knife making has grown substantially. Of what? Of knife making? Yeah, okay. knife making. And so there are websites where you can, like knife makers, uh, knifemakers.com and knifekits.com, like where I can get handle material, steel, pens, like all kinds of stuff like that uh, to make knives. So it's a, it made it a little easier because I'm, I'd say I'm a little of the older guys that really didn't have YouTube to learn from. So it was really by trial and error. How many times have you seen the movie Highlander? <laughs> Man, it's not it's not the question. The the uh, how many times I've seen it? I've seen the series. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. like, like, there man, can I, only be one. But there can only be one. By the like, way, I always think the funniest part about that movie is they're in the Scottish Highlands, and the only actual Scott that was on this in the movie <laughs> was, was, was Sean Connery, Connery. Yeah. <laughs> but he played a Spaniard. Okay. That's funny. <laughs> it's like, my name is Ramirez. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? Like, <laughs> what? That don't even sound... I can only be one. Like, that's, that don't even sound spaniard at all. <laughs> <laughs> Hey everyone, just a quick break from today's show as we are coming to you from Charleston Wine and Food, having a fantastic time out here, but want to take a quick break just to talk about some of our fantastic sponsors that help keep our lights on for the show. Yeah, and looking around at all this technology and people trying to streamline things with a huge event like Charleston Wine and Food, I'm thinking who could really help them for the uh, 2023 version mm -hmm. is spot on. Oh, yeah. Working with you, for you. Whether you need simple mobile payment technology or a fully integrated restaurant management system, Spot On will work with you to customize the right set of tools for your business. And as those needs evolve and your business grows, like Crafton 2 and 3, mm -hmm. we not only have the existing technology to support you, but are constantly innovating to help your future proof your business. So, Call Tanya Manibo. It's 858-213-7820. Tanya is a local rep. You can also email her, Tanya M at spoton.com. That's T-A-N-Y-A-M at spoton.com. 
And we're in the town where it all got started for Gig Pro. That's right. Gig Pro got started out of Charleston with Chef Ben Ellsworth. But Gig Pro is calling all restaurants and hospitality owners, managers, and employees. You get to know Gig Pro because they're changing the way people work and hire. We're not just filling shifts. We're bringing instant solutions to the table for the entire industry. So businesses right now, sign up and get your first gig on us first gig free from gig pro when you use the gigpro.com backslash ncfb promo code and for the pros get five dollars off for everyone you refer learn more about the app their mission and sign up for free on gigpro.com So your knives are not only beautiful and 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 uh, you know have great craftsmanship to it, but there's also a lot of style to yes. them. Like these handles are beautiful; they make everything you know they're unique. Mm -hmm. So someone, a chef, is in 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 the kitchen and he's prepping. You kind of know from afar that that's a Middleton made knife. Yes. Like, where'd you get? that like boldness to just say, all right, I'm going to make one that looks like a giraffe handle or uh, <laughs> like I was looking at, like you've got some wild, crazy styles out here. Um, Where'd that come from? So my general style is the handle shape is like a Coke bottle. So it, uh, when you grab it, you, it conforms to your hand and it just feels right. Yeah. Um, and on my larger knives, like the chef knife, it has a notch underneath the heel of the knife yeah. where you can do a pinch grip and where it just, your hand just snuggle up to it and just feel like an extension of your hand. And I kind of got those uh, from Jason a little bit, but I kind of uh, embellished it to make it my own. Yeah. And that's that's basically I kind of got it from him just a little bit, and like and just like okay, thank you, but now it's mine. So, <laughs> uh, so getting ran with it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Not, not so much, but it took it took me time to make it mine. It's almost like um, if I give you a piece of paper. You still gotta make. You still gotta write on it. You still right. gotta write your story. You still gotta do the, everything that you need to do uh, to make it yours. Do you handle everything for the production? I mean, the wood in the handle. Do you melt the steel A to Z, or how does that work? Yes, I do every bit of it, from from buying the steel, from forging the steel, to uh, doing the, the profiling of it, the heat treating, everything. Because don't get me wrong, I have people, I have apprentice that works in my shop, but okay. but it's still my name, it's still yeah. my product, it's still I I need to breathe life into it. Yeah. So this this is mine. Talk to us about these foldable knives that are here. <laughs> like I I carry a little a little knife on me at all times just because it's useful and and mm -hmm. I'm always cutting a box or cutting something. I find I I use this knife on me like twice, three times a day. This knife, though, on the other hand, is like, you were, you were telling me earlier, it's almost like a uh, a chef knife on the go, right? Like Yes. But this is a mag, like a massive foldable <laughs> knife. It is. But what, what, like, in for one, how big is the blade? Um, uh, what's the size of this? So the blade, the length of it is five inches long. The width of it um, is two inches wide. So it's basically a, a Sintaku. Yeah, that's what I was going like, to say. It like looks like a Sintaku yeah. knife. So you can use this in a kitchen, but also like if you're out fishing, but you're like cooking yeah. for real, and Outdoors, you can break yeah. down some animals with these yes. with this knife. I'm a hunter. I fish. I do that myself. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I've broken down deer. I've I've got fish with that. Um. It's the idea came from actually I had a broken sentaku, um, maybe eight years ago, and I was like, why can't I make this fold? And like, and it took me that long to get it right because I'm not a, a a folding knife maker. That idea I've seen a lot of chefs travel and they carry knife back they knife rolls or they say like oh i forgot my knives in the the hotel or it's on the plane or, or something yeah where like okay what what can i do to um fill that need or that want there's a cartoon called robots and in yeah. that cartoon there's there's uh, a saying see a need fill a need so so i'm saying okay if i if there's a problem i need to be the solution so if if I have solution, now I have security. So, so I that is my answer to the traveling chef, or my. So, that will be when I market it more. That will be that something that they can put in their back pocket yeah. or be on the subway, and you don't even know they that they that they have a, a pocket knife in their back pocket. Yeah. Now, did anybody come to you today and say, "Quentin, man, I forgot my knives." Can yeah. I grab some? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you quickly said, go find yourself your own. Yeah, like, uh, no, give me your credit card. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, these aren't necessarily inexpensive knives, uh, no, but they're, they're high quality knives. They're, the smaller blades are kind of ranging between like, 
150 to about 400 for the yeah. chef knives, right? Yeah, so my pairing knives are around 180 $200, and, and you can go all the way up to $2,000. Yeah, like, and that's with the Damascus and the uh, embellishments and all that stuff. But if you wanted to go that way, yeah. So, it, but it this is like if you're a chef or like, uh, like the significant other of a chef, like <laughs> this is a gift. This is yes. something that like you receive and you're like, oh yeah, that's now part of my, my 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 setup. Yeah, that's my that, that's the this center is my of my music yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's great. You know, it's funny. Though. I'm looking at your hands. They look. They look pretty pretty nice. They don't look like they've been sliced up a bunch. I think the knife man would have a bunch of cuts all over his, his Okay, head. so the, well, I wear a lot of nitrile gloves because <laughs> okay. my hands used to be grimy. I was an industrial mechanic and I worked in uh, Mercedes and I went to school to be an aircraft mechanic. Yeah. And when I would rub on my wife's face or touch my wife, <laughs> your hand's rough. Yeah. Like, so my hands sweat. So I'd say, okay, She's why not? Like, so, yeah. So why do I uh, need to beat up my hands? I need to take care of my hands because that's what I'm doing to make, make a living for my family. So the nitro gloves, keep my hands moist. You ever, and, you ever read of Mice of Men? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah like, exactly. Surely. Yeah, yeah. I'll put, I'll put the Vaseline inside that's, the glove. In the yeah. one glove, just so I can touch, touch my, my wife. wife. Yeah, <laughs> actually, yeah, yeah. I can't yeah. believe you know that. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Like, so so um, that's the idea because man, like don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm a hard worker. I have callus on my, and I did all that, but I still need to go home and be the man and yeah. I need to be I just that like you look like you don't uh, slice your hand very often no like, I have pretty good and I've got burns I've got <laughs> cuts no yeah. I got it like, you got, I got it like it's, I cut the tendons in, the, in this finger yeah. this finger right here it, it'll never be straight again yeah like, so like but don't get me wrong like don't don't let this fool you I would say shake my hand and you, you can tell, and you can tell. <laughs> well uh so how does somebody find your knives yeah um so yes you can go to middletomadeknives.com or follow me on Instagram, Middletomade Knives, or on Facebook, Middletomade Knives. Cool. And you can get like a custom knife. Can you, could I say, like, I want it to look like this? Or do you do any of that type yes, of custom I, knife? Yes, I, I can do uh, custom knives. So basically, you need to either email me or uh, where we can set up a consultation where I can figure out your wants and needs. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're awesome. Get yourself some Middleton knives, everybody. Yes, please do. Yeah. yeah. You will slice very merrily. <laughs> <laughs> Take care, man. Thank you very much. Thanks for listening to the NC f and Podcast. And if you've stuck with us this long, review us on iTunes and remember, five stars are encouraged.